Today we have four pizzas participating in the challenge. The first one is Amy's Margarita Pizza, and I've actually tried this pizza before and I really like it. The ingredients list is short and simple and nothing on here seems sketchy. Our second pizza is this Cauliflower Margarita Pizza, and no, I don't agree that pizza is a vegetable, but I'm really curious to see how good this is. I've never tried a cauliflower crust before. I have tried the cauliflower rice at Chipotle and I wasn't that thrilled about it, so this will be interesting to see. I definitely appreciate and understand the intent of a cauliflower pizza. I appreciate that it has a lower glycemic index and it doesn't have the carbs. And if I'm eating pizza, I probably just want to enjoy a lot of carbs in one sitting. But regardless, I'm excited to give this a try. Our third pizza for today is this Target brand pizza. And the picture here looks really appetizing, so good job to go and gather on your marketing. I can't wait to try it, it looks really good. I hope it actually comes with basil leaves, but I have a feeling that that's too good to be true. Where's the ingredients list? Okay, the ingredients list actually looks pretty good. It's pretty short, nothing sticks out to me as terrifying. And our last margarita pizza for today is this one, California Pizza Kitchen Margarita Pizza. And the marketing looks really nice, as you can expect from this brand. It looks really cheesy and maybe a little bit too cheesy for my liking. But overall, the picture looks nice, it looks appetizing. The ingredients list seems a little bit longer than the other ones. And like all the other pizzas, this is a pretty carby pizza. And I'm excited to try it. As a lover of food and productivity with a pretty useless biochemistry degree, I make videos to try to help you get the most out of life, so if that sounds interesting to you, then I hope you will consider subscribing to my channel. First, we are going to cook these two pizzas because these both need to be cooked at 400 degrees. So let's see how these look on the inside. I'm really bad at opening things. Pizza box, you're letting me down. Wow, how many layers do I have to go through? Okay, we're just gonna break it. All right, here's our California Pizza Kitchen pizza. Now let's open up Amy's. That worked a lot better this time. Good job, Amy's. So here we go. It looks a lot cheesier when it's frozen than when the cheese is all spread out. I've never had an issue with the amount of cheese here, but I've also never looked at this pizza very closely. But already knowing that I'm generally happy with the amount of cheese in this pizza, I'm not too concerned about what I'm seeing right now. So the California Pizza Kitchen one comes with a layer of cardboard on the bottom and the Amy's one does not. And I understand that's more sustainable, but also I kind of like that layer of cardboard because it makes my pizza handling a little bit more versatile instead of just having to have my hand on the bottom of the pizza. And something else that you might notice is that the California Pizza Kitchen one is a little bit bigger than the Amy's pizza. That's interesting because the Amy's pizza is a little bit pricier but maybe they make up for it in the quality of the ingredients. And we'll see how good the California Pizza Kitchen one actually is, and if it's worth it to pay a little bit more for the smaller Amy's one. And now it's time to open the other two pizzas, which will be cooked at 425 degrees. The first one is this Target one, which will cook for 11 to 13 minutes. There's actual basil leaves. Check it out, there's tomatoes and basil leaves and big things of mozzarella. And when I say I don't like cheese, I just mean I don't like any other cheeses and I don't like cheese when it's not on pizza. But on pizza, I really like mozzarella, especially if it's in circular form. And now our last pizza. It has like the thumb push tabs to open. And this one looks really good too. I like the amount of green stuff on here. It looks pretty promising. I would never guess by looking at it that it has a cauliflower crust and I'm very happy with the amount of green things on it. I really like basil and I'm always happy for all the basil. Also another observation is that this pizza does come with the cardboard thing on the bottom. So that's interesting. Maybe it gets a little bit floppy in transit and maybe that's why it needed the extra cardboard. But it's a good thing that cardboard or no cardboard shouldn't really affect the taste of our pizza. So here I have the two 425 degree pizzas side by side. This is the cauliflower pizza and again it has the cardboard thing on the bottom. And this is the Target brand pizza and the crust on this one looks so good. And on this one I really like the distribution of the tomatoes and the basil. The final comment that I have on these two is that the cauliflower one has really tiny shredded cheeses. And this one has really thick mozzarella cheese pieces as well as the rounded parts. And now it's time to stick this one in the oven before it loses its shape. 
One eternity later. If you've enjoyed this pizza tasting video so far, then I hope you'll give it a thumbs up and hopefully it can help you next time that you're trying to choose a margarita pizza from the frozen food aisle. According to the instructions, I have to let it sit for two minutes and I don't know if you can tell without me dropping a pizza, but there's like a liquid layer here. So I'm assuming the two minutes is to let that kind of dry up a little bit. But the pizza looks beautiful and it smells delicious and I'm so hungry and I'm so excited to eat it. And I'm looking forward to trying the other pizzas too. And I'm trying not to be biased because I've had this one before and I love it so much. It's one of my favorite foods. But I also want to leave an opportunity for liking new pizzas. Currently, my dog is snoring, so if you hear any noises, then that's what it is. Eventually. It's time to take out the California Pizza Kitchen pizza out of the oven. This pizza looks beautiful and it looks very cooked. It doesn't have a layer of liquid in the middle. And it smells a lot different from the other one. All I smell is cheese and salt and tomatoes. I don't smell any basil, even though I see a couple of green things here and there. This is the cauliflower pizza and it looks pretty good and little shredded cheeses stayed little and I'm kind of excited about that because usually when given the opportunity I opt for less cheese as opposed to more cheese and the crust looks really flat like it looks like it got squished. Uh, it looks very crispy though and I'm really excited to try it. Here we have our Target brand pizza and Honestly, out of all of these pizzas, this one looks the best to me. And the crust looks so good, the basil is still green, and it has a lot of cheese on it, but something about it just makes me really want to take a bite out of it, like even without using a pizza cutter. But I'll go ahead and I'll cut it, and we'll see which is the best pizza. Our first one, Amy's Pizza. Looks good, it smells good, and this is thin crust and generally I associate thin crust with being crispy. This isn't crispy, it's a little bit like a thinner version of a regular crust if that makes sense. It doesn't have the structural integrity of a crispy thin crust, but I will give you a flavor update in a second. I know that it's not good to find happiness in food. Amy's margarita pizza always brings me so much joy every single time. And honestly, I would give that one an A plus because it's so good. I do wish that the crust was a little bit crispier, but I can't really complain because the crust has a pretty good taste and a pretty good texture. Here is the California Pizza Kitchen one, and it cooked longer, so it's still hot. It's a lot hotter than the Amy's one. And as you can see, this one has a little bit more structural integrity. It looks a lot crispier, and let's see how it tastes. There's not really the same variety of flavors that I tasted with Amy's, but I do appreciate the crispiness. It did feel pretty crispy. Something I don't really like about this pizza though is that I don't think it has a variety of flavors like Amy's. And maybe that's to be expected because of the difference in price. But I feel like this pizza, despite its longer ingredients list, it just has like pizza flavor. You can't really taste the tomatoes separate from the mozzarella and from the crust. So that's something to think about if you're a fan of being able to taste everything on your pizza. And if you're just looking for a frozen pizza to fill your pizza void or to keep you from being hungry, then it's definitely a better value for your dollar compared to Amy's. But if you like to actually enjoy your food, then I would recommend sticking to Amy's pizza even though it's a little bit pricier. If these two pizzas were like a musical composition, then Amy's pizza seems like it was made using a lot of notes and a lot of instruments, whereas the California Pizza Kitchen pizza, I feel like it was made using only one instrument and one octave. So overall, it's not bad, but it's definitely not my favorite and I probably wouldn't buy it again, but I might eat it again if it appeared in front of me and if I was hungry. All right, now it's time to try the cauliflower pizza. And it's a little bit floppy once I cut it. Overall, it doesn't look bad. The edges still look really crispy and they look really good. So here we go. Okay, that wasn't bad. It tasted pretty good, but I would be lying if I said it didn't taste like cauliflower. You can definitely tell that the taste is a little bit different from your standard pizza, but it's really not bad. And for the price point, I honestly wouldn't buy it again. But if it happened to be at someone's house or if it happened to appear cooked in front of me, 
then I would definitely eat it again. If both the California Pizza Kitchen pizza and the cauliflower pizza both showed up in front of me, I would definitely choose the cauliflower one over the California Pizza Kitchen one. And now it's time for the last one, and I'm going to try the Good & Gather Target brand pizza. And I am so excited because it looks so good and I can't wait to try it. It looks like it's thin crust, but the edges kind of look puffed up. So we have a little bit of structural integrity on the edges, but not so much in the middle, which is to be expected. And I lost a little bit of my cheese there. Let's put that back on. Okay, this isn't going well, but I guess I'll take multiple bites and see how it goes. Okay, so my first impression of that doughy piece is that the sauce and the crust have a pretty good taste. Now we're going to try this piece with basil, crust, and tomatoes, and cheese. In my humble opinion, this pizza is so good. You can actually taste the basil, and you can taste the cheese, and the mozzarella, and it's like a pizza party in your mouth. In terms of cost, this pizza is a lot cheaper than the Amy's pizza, but I do get a very similar experience in that I can taste the different ingredients and it tastes like a pizza that could have been homemade or a pizza that was made with love. So I highly recommend this one and unlike the last two where my honest feedback was that I wouldn't buy them, but I might eat them. This one I would actually buy again. Because it's cheaper than the Amy's one, I might actually buy this one more often. I like that the cheese and the tomatoes are well distributed and that there is ample room in the crust for holding your pizza without getting your hands dirty. So I really appreciate that. Good and gather. Thank you and good job on your pizza. So now that you've seen me try all of the pizzas, here is how I would rank them. Number four, in last place, I would rank the California Pizza Kitchen pizza because it honestly didn't feel like there was much there to it. Like it definitely had flavor, which I would consider pizza flavor, but there was no enjoyment that came from eating that pizza. And I'm really sorry, I hate to be critical. And if it's your favorite pizza, then feel free to defend it in the comments below. But I really was not a fan. The third place award goes to the cauliflower pizza. And the reason for that is because it tastes like cauliflower. Personally, if I am in the mood for pizza, that means I am in the mood for actual pizza and all of the carbohydrates that come with actual pizza. I'm not a fan of fake cheeses and I'm not a fan of fake crusts and I'm not really a fan of trying to hide calories or trying to hide vegetables. So maybe I'm a little bit biased and not liking the cauliflower pizza as much, but like I mentioned before, it's not bad and I would gladly eat it again if it appeared in front of me. And now for second place, I would award the Target Good and Gather pizza. The Target one was so good the dough itself seemed perfect, the cheese seemed perfect, it seemed evenly distributed, and as a personal preference, I'm knocking it down to number two just because I personally prefer my pizza with a little bit less cheese, but it wasn't bad and I will definitely be buying it again. And now for number one. It was such a close race between first place and second place, so this honestly was really hard, but I'm still going to rank Amy's Pizza as number one, and it seems like Amy's really knows how to do pizza.